All right, so let's talk about relics. It's a little bit late, but you guys been wondering about all these relic sets. And during my stream, people always ask me what relic set should certain class go? What relic set should, should I go? What is this relic set, relic set better than this relic set? Well, I wrote the full description of all relic sets and my thought process for it. So basically, this video or you know this discussion is going to help you the fund fundamentals of which relic set should you go based on what you're thinking of. So I got this uh, pictures ready as well so that we can look at the actual description of the relic too. Let's talk with Dominion first. Let's look at Dominion here. And look at the set bonuses. The Dominion set bonus is very simple. It does 50% less damage foes to awakening skills, but 20% less cooldown. Awakening skill uses plus one, right? When using awakening skill, gain inner awakening for two minutes. So what this inner awakening does is it gives you 18% cooldown on all skills except awakening skills and movement skills uh, and plus 10% skill damage. So this, this just gives you uh, 18% cooldown and 10% skill damage if you just read it. And also, you have 6 out of effect for... Um, Wait, Nerd Awakening is going to cooldown 30% on movement skills. So this is uh, not translated properly, but this is like your space bar. And damage to foes another 15%. So if you just read it, it goes like... You can think of it this way. Oh, so if I use my Awakening, I have this Inner Awakening for 2 minutes. So what does that mean? If your awakening is in two minutes cooldown, you can keep this buff up 100% of the time. So you question yourself, so how can I put that to two minutes every cooldown? Well, you have two choices. Either one, you go awakening engraving, or you have high swiftness. That's why it's a relic set where you receive cooldown damage buff and awakening is used since the buff lasts two minutes. You need to match your awakening cooldown to have this buff 100% of the time. In the past, people were using Awakening Engraving uh, to make it make it viable. So a long time ago, before Nightmare came out, I had level 3 Awakening on my Gunslinger for a full domination build. Uh, that was a legitimate build back then. But since you have Nightmare now, it's different. But we're going to talk about Nightmare later. But if we go with High Swiftness and Judgment Conviction, you can keep the buff of 100% of the time. But it requires high skill management. This is covered by my War Dancer video as well, where... If you activate Conviction and Judgment, you get additional cooldown. So when you have an additional cooldown, you can use your Awakening skill and have less than 2 minutes or about 2 minutes cooldown so that you can keep this Inner Awakening for 2 minutes 100% of the time. Therefore, you have the cooldown and the skill damage. This is called Full Dominion Set. Now, the example classes are No Awakening Engraving, Right, high swiftness EO Soulfist, energy overflow Soulfist, and War Dancer. You go two four or six domination. So you go two nightmare because of one reason. We're gonna go over nightmare later. But two sets of nightmare gives you fifteen percent, fifty percent less spending on mana, and just does flat damage. So if you lack mana, you go two sets of nightmare. Sometimes you do that. But if you don't think you're gonna lack mana because you attack a little bit slower, you tend to go six domin uh, dominion. That being said, this covers most of the Dominion. So if you are questioning yourself, should I use Dominion or not? Is one, is your awakening going to be short cooldown? Right? Two, uh, with the short cooldown, are you going to be utilizing that up upkeep 100% of the time? Because you're going to use your awakening more than once because it gives you three extra awakenings if you have the full six set. So you can use it six times. Other than those two builds, that's fine. Okay. Now, let's go to the next one. Yearning. Yearning is mandatory for all supports. So if you don't go Yearning as a support, you are trolling. The game is actually a completely different version. A post Yearning and then past Yearning. If your support has Yearning, you will have a gold ring around you. And you guys see me have that all the time. When you have the gold ring around you, if your party mates inside the gold ring, they receive a buff for a certain amount of time. And when you're inside that certain amount of time, you're going to have 10% movement speed, 10% attack speed, and 10% attack damage. Does that make sense? So, support just goes up into the sky. Uh, they go to the moon when they finish up the yearning because they will all take you because for that 10% attack speed, 10% movement speed, extra bonuses. It's actually really good. You'll notice how good it is. 
well, DPSs will know how good it is, but unfortunately, supports are not going to uh, feel the boost, but you'll see other people enjoying that buff. It's like drugs. But either way, you, you don't go anything else other than Yearing. You have to run a lot of Vicuses because it costs 40 Vicus Wings when you have the weapon and the head for Valton. That's why 6 Yearning, uh, what happens is they kind of push... Uh, if you have a static and then you have a support in your group, they usually push the support's uh, wings first so that they can finish their Yearning set faster. And if they finish their Yearning set faster, the whole party's DPS increases. So this is static only. Don't do that in pubs where like some supports go, I'm a support, you should push the wings to me. Don't be don't be a troll like that. Because some people actually do that in Korean server too. And they get flamed for it. Destruction. Now the same thing. Uh, so the destruction is same as a support set. So what it does is it's a relic set provides us to the ability. So it's like instead of damage, it gives you vital buffs and stuff. So Artists can actually use this relic set due to the majority of skill being multi-hits, right? It's almost nearly impossible to keep this uptime 100%. Actually, let's take a look. Let's take a look what Destruction actually does to show you. So, targets have protection effect shield from party effects of seed of life applied to 8 seconds. Endurance plus 25. So, you can you can see that this is a defense-related stuff. And when seed of life is stacked 20 times, its effect is move and life activation trigger for 10 seconds where it covers 995 HP, Every second, effect doubles if HP is below 30%, right? And when life's, life activation is effect, gain their resonance for 3 seconds, attack power 2% at max 10 stacks. So this does give you attack damage, but after 20 stacks, right? So it takes time for you to... So what you call this, you call heating it up. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll cover that later on different sets. But you need to have the life stack 20 times in order for you to be viable. In the, in, but in Yearning, you don't need to do anything. You just attack once and then you have the aura around you. So with that being said, there's no reason for you to go Destruction instead of Yearning, right? Because it takes a long time to ramp up and it get, it doesn't give you enough uh, attack damage. It only gives you 10% attack damage, right? At 10, oh, 20% attack damage at max 10 stacks. Uh, there's no really a good reason to go. Long time ago though, there was a fun build where Gunnancer went Destruction and actually, Gunlancer went Yearning, and then Artist went Destruction. So the party never died. So what they did was they just stood still and did DPS and just take all the hits. And they just never died. With that being said, you can say, why is this bad? So in Lost Ark Raids, you have raids allow you to deal DPS while taking hits. For example, Valton can knock you out. Vikas has a Lust meter. Clown has a Madness meter. Belshazzar has a Knockout as well. But dungeons like Kyangil, the latest one, could work. But either way, it's like a severely worse choice compared to Yearning. So, but, you know, since this set uh, is there, to have you guys just wondering what this is, you know, you can just take a look at it. But it looks like it takes a lot of Valton materials. So since that Valton is released only, maybe they can just have, uh, maybe a support can increase a lot of uh, vitality to try Vicus. I think it's a legitimate, I think it's a legitimate strategy if you guys have a lot of Valton bones to spare, right? Charm. So charming is trash. So what it, if you read it, if you write it, it does this unsuccessful hit, gain a chance to trigger an electric attack. This damage group by 80% when mo attacking multiple foes. So basically what this does is at a random chance, it makes like an electric shock or a flame attack that does additional damage. So the only time they use this is DPS Bard. Some people say DPS Bard is good, but it's actually not DPS Bards doing the damage. It's this thing. Because Bards do so many multiple hits to a point that these lightning uh, shocks creates all these um, lightning bolts to do damage. It's actually not DPS Bard doing the damage. It's actually the Charm Relic set doing the damage. You can actually use this for DPS Bard for Chaos Dungeons, like solo content. It's actually pretty good on Chaos Dungeons too. And also, Energy Overflow Soul Fist used this long time ago uh, because they also had a lot of attacks, right? A lot of multi-hit attacks. It used them long time ago when it was off-meta. And the reason why they use it on an off-meta was because long time ago, we didn't have Nightmare, Hallucination, and Salvation at all. So we didn't have any choices. People didn't have any that much of a choice of uh, Relic sets to take. That's why they take it. That's why some classes took it for a test, like an off meta. So we don't have to talk too much of it, but as a bard, maybe you can use it for uh, Chaos Dungeons after you can switch it uh, very easily. Now we're going to the fun part, Entropy. So Entropy is 
very simple. This is a back and back attack, front attack damage. Look at this. Look how simple this is. So I, I think the percentage is a little different. They're not updated with the latest update. So what it does is crit damage 15%, back attack modifies as a 50. Successful back attack crit rate 25% uh, 20 for 5 seconds. Damage to foes 5%, and then backhand attack modified to 18%. So basically what this does is it's like a keen blunt plus precision dagger are built on the relic set. So if you have six set of entropy, it boosts your damage as long as you do back and head attack. What, what's important for you to know is if you don't do back or head attack, this does nothing to you. But it recently did an update where you can still do, you can still do a little bit of damage because that's damage to foes 5%, right? So if you don't do back and head attack, you just do 5% more damage. That's what it is. But it used to be zero. So we had a joke where if you have an entropy uh, class, if you don't do a back or a head attack, for example, a Deadeye, uh, if he doesn't land the back attack on the shotgun, he basically doesn't have any relic sets on him. That's, that's, that's how bad it was. Also, it requires a lot of Vicus Winks. So it's going to take you a while to get it full. But Entropy set, if you finish the sixth set, you get a huge boost of power boost. So this is when like a uh, Deathblow Striker feels real nice because you see those you see those big numbers. Deathblade, Deathblade as well, maybe Surge. You see those big numbers, right? That's when you start looking at those big numbers. So again, if your class uses entropy or not, follow these steps of thinking. Does my attack has a lot of back and head attack? For example, Deathblade's all back attack almost, and Striker is also all back attack, right? And Gunlancer is also all head attack. Destroyer, also all head attack. If that is the case, you are an Entropy class. Now, next one, Nightmare. Nightmare has two phases. So let's look at Nightmare really quickly to get you guys a little bit of understanding. So Nightmare, two set effects, super simple. MP cost minus 50%, damage skills that consume MP, 12% damage, right? Now, four set and six set is where it gets confusing. When a class that possesses MP uses an awakening skill, you gain magic addiction. When MP reaches 30% or lower, magic addiction is removed and boundless MP is gained. Right? So we're going to call this mana burn phase and unlimited mana phase. That's what it's called in Korea. Right? When current MP becomes 100% while boundless MP is active, the effect is removed and magic addiction is gained. Both effects cannot be active at the same time. So magic addiction, you do 15% more damage when using a skill that consumes MP. Max MP is used 7% more. So you actually use more MP. Because it, it also uses max MP too. Boundless MP though, this is unlimited mana mode, is recover 3% of max MP every one second with cooldown minus 20% and attack and movement speed at 12%. Okay? So... 4 set and then the 6 set is when magic addition is active, damage dealt to foes is 15%. And boundless MP is active, you, you have movement speed and cooldown additional 15%. That's huge. So think about it this way. When this came out, people were researching a lot of builds. So Nightmare has two phases. I wrote it down here. Mana burn phase and unlimited mana phase. So in order for you to get unlimited mana phase, what do you need to do? You need to be under 30% mana to activate the mana burn phase. When you are in a mana burn phase, you recover mana super fast and you have the fast cooldown. What does that mean? What if you spend so much mana on your skills to a point that you can keep this unlimited mana phase? That's why we have the reflux instant cast. This is exactly the reason why we have reflux instant cast because reflux instant cast works with the thirty, with the forty percent cooldown, with the level two set effect, your skill is like under seven seconds every time, and since every single skill that the sorcerers has uses a huge amount of mana, right? So you can actually keep your mana under hundred percent to a point that she can spam the skill as much as you can. That's this is why it works. This is why you guys can't do Reflux Instant Cast because you don't have the 40% cooldown. Basically, you guys are missing 40% cooldown. That's why your Reflux Instant Cast works. Basically, you guys are playing a Reflux... If you're playing a Reflux Instant Cast right now by looking at the Korean uh, plays and stuff, why do I feel so, flo so slow, etc.? You guys are playing almost twice as the slow version because you don't have 
the nightmare set. Just think of it that way. Let's let's go over another class. One class ignition sork utilizes both phases. So why does ignition sork utilize both phase? Mana burn for igniter damage and unlimited mana for identity gauge game mode. So think about it this way. When you're on a mana burn phase, you do additional damage. And when you're in a mana burn phase, you activate igniter and do as much damage as you can on your doomsdays and all that stuff. And when you're filling up your identity gauge, you go to unlimited mana mode by spamming more skills. If you spam more skills, you gain more identity gauge, right? So when you, ga when you have a full gauge of identity, you wait for your mana to refill to 100% to go to mana burn phase, and then you turn on your ignition and then do the max amount of damage. That's why it takes a little bit of skills to do it properly. Pinnacle Clave is the same case. If you go two blue and two red, it is better for you to spam blue skills, but it's better for you to just two red skills at uh, uh, just, just one or twice, like a burst. So you want to be in unlimited mana mode for five blue skills at the regular time. You can use red skills when you're on, in a mana burn phase. So you can think of it that way. So think of how Nightmare works and adjust your play style based on that. That's very important for you. So you got to keep on reading this to understand and then to see how, see how some of the classes are actually adjusting towards to it. This is the most popular relic set among all DPS classes because this is all rounded support of all attributes. This is like, think of it this way. It gives you mana. It gives you, you get less spending on mana. You get to spam skills. You can either be mana burn phase or unlimited mana phase. So if you have a class that can use a lot of mana, you can probably use this unlimited mana phase. If you have a class that doesn't use that much mana, but you want to maximize that DPS, you utilize the mana burn phase. And which is classes Gunslinger, Zerk, Gunlancer Blue, Glavier, P Pinnacle, right? Artillerist, Sharpshooter, Summoner, Sork, Arcana, and Deathblade. Deathblade uses it on a few case if you don't want to use Entropy, okay? So this covers up Nightmare. So if you are wondering what do I go, just going Nightmare is not going to hurt you in, at all because most classes go Nightmare. It is the most popular relic set among all DPS classes. It will never go wrong with Nightmare. So hallucination, think of it this way. So on a successful attack, gain hallucination for six seconds. Damage against false 30, 13%. Hallucination cannot be refreshed and cannot trigger again for three seconds after it ends, right? So you have crit rate 15%. On crit, hallucination's duration one second down, uh, up with the cooldown of 0 0.5 seconds. So you have to crit in order for you to increase the hallucination's duration. If Hallucination lasts more than 9 seconds, gain reality for 40 seconds. So reality is damage to false 12% and crit rate. On crit, hallucination duration is 1%, uh, uh, increases 1 second, and cooldown is 0 0.5 seconds. So why is, why is this important? It's actually really bad for a 2 set. But when it goes 6 set, you have this thing called a reality, right? They call it reality. But in order for you to activate reality for that extra 12% damage, you gotta wait nine seconds. So hallucination is not the greatest relic set ever, but there are classes that have no choice to, you have to go with it. So if you go through it, here's the thing. This relic set provides crit rate. So think of it this way. This relic set just provides crit rate, just provides a lot of crit rate. It, go, it goes up to 22%. 20% crit rate is actually pretty big because level three adrenaline is only 15. So this set is often used by classes who are lacking crit rate and crit rate synergy skills. So this is a class called Scouter, Robust Sophist, Demonic Impulse, Shadow Hunter. Also, High Swiftness Summoner. Why? Because Scouter has no crit-related skills. Robust Sophist doesn't have any crit-related skills. Demonic Impulse Shadowhunter doesn't have any crit-related skills. Do you think uh, Scouter and Robust Sophist and Demonic Impulse can use Nightmare? No. Why do you think they can't use Nightmare? Because Scouter uses battery. They don't use mana. Demonic Impulse as uh, Shadowhunter, they're actually, they don't really need mana to go back and forth. Right? Sophist, same case. They have energy. There's a reason, there's a lot of reason of all these things, if you think about it. People will not notice a big jump seeing more yellow numbers in Lost Wing Cliff, right? You will notice you guys see a lot of yellow numbers after Lost Wing Cliff because of the 7% crit rate. 6 at hallucination gives you 20% crit rate, which is better than Adrenaline level 3. So classes with no crit attributes, they utilize the set bonus 
to use damage engravings like Keen Blunt. Because Keen Blunt is one of the most efficient high ceiling engraving in this game. So it's also good for classes that rely on crit rates like Robust Soul Fist. So if you are lacking crit rate, you have no choice to go Hallucination. But this particular set requires the longest to prepare, like loading up the stacks and you have to wait 9 seconds. So if a short raids or raids of many cutscenes, you mauled. Like these guys mauled, like losing the uh, the reality version of it. So you can think of it this way. It gives you a lot of crit and it takes a long time to, to ramp it up. Okay. So to give you an example, you have the Mnemonic Impulse SH, Scouter, Swiftness Summoner, Robust Soul Fist, War Dancer, Scrapper, off meta. So why let's take let's talk about War Dancer and Scrapper just a little bit. Oh, why would they use that? So if you go if you play a scrapper, uh, if you are stressed out about entropy. There are some Scrapper high swiftness build, and then you go Hallucination. It works, but no one really does that because why would you do that when Entropy gives you so much damage, right? But if you are like a very new player, and then you want to be just safe, doing consistent damage, lower ceiling, but consistent, you take different builds. It's not a wrong build. It's a different play style. It's a different play style that you are trying to help your team. Salvation. Salvation's biggest merit is the bonus attack speed. So what Salvation does is almost exactly the same thing as Hallucination. That's why you guys are confused about Salvation and Hallucination. On hit, gain enhancement for 120 seconds. That's 2 minutes. Critical hits give grant 2 stacks. Max 20 stacks. When taking damage, HP under 30%. Lose all stacks. Reset cooldown and mobility and awakening skill, which is nice and reduce damage taken by 30% for 8 seconds. So this is the more of a utility uh, attribute. 4 set bonus, enhancement damage increases 1.4, 1.8, and enhancement damage increases 2.1 and 2.7. And gain attack, 10% attack speed at 20 stacks. And gain 5% damage dealt at 20 stacks. What does this mean? This is a stack based ramp up set bonus stuff that gives you bonus increased damage, right? and it gives you 10% attack speed. If you think about this, the Salvation's biggest merit is a bonus attack speed. So if your class can take advantage of this attack speed bonus, it's a great bonus set. If not, it's not great. If you take Demonic Impulse for an example, right? With full Salvation set, they're actually able to use A and S skill three times during transformation, but you need a lot of, we need some cooldown too, by the way, you need some cooldown gems. However, without sufficient cooldown, gems or swiftness, hallucination, right? Uh, hallucination Sour Hunter cannot use A and S skill three times. So when I say A and S skill three times, is what's important is if you transform, you can use A and S skill three times at, at the transformation time. That's kind of that's that's like the max amount of numbers you can use. So it's either you you decide you go use it three times or twice. And as for Scouter, same case, if you actually go Scouter with a Salvation, the skill rotation kind of changes and then you can do new things. However, the lack of crit damage is still lower than its level 2 set. This is why people are confused with Salvation versus Hallucination, right? Salvation doesn't give you any crit. Hallucination gives you crit. Salvation gives you attack speed. Hallucination gives you 20% crit. So if you go like which is better, it's actually a, a, a poor comparison because they're just two different play styles. That's why every time on a live stream, when people ask me like, which one do I go? Which one do I go? Which one am I supposed to go? I always answer, it's just different play styles and it depends what people want. So crit spec, demonic impulse, shadow hunter, right? Glavier, pinnacle and scouter. And I put bad as scouter because scouter does not have any crit related things. If you go salvation, he can't crit. You're gonna see white numbers and he just, he just doesn't do anything. You probably need like more crit. Probably need more crit. Last one, betrayal. So betrayal is actually uh pretty fun. So you guys, uh, when you guys watch my stream, you see me having. Oh, what is that lightning circle around you? That's the betrayal set. What betrayal set does is creates a powerful ether with the ether enhancement engraving that only you can use within three meters. There are three different ether types, right? It creates three of them if you have the full six set. And each ether either drops a meteor randomly, or creates a lightning shock around you, or it fills your identity gates to the full. So it isn't main off meta relic set. Long time ago, when there was no nightmare, hallucinate salvation, your character could not use dominion entropy 
People actually had to use this. So Sophus was actually booty tier because she, she couldn't even use any of the relic sets. So they actually used Betrayal. Because Betrayal set has Meteor Falling, Ascension, Ethers. Where it provides attack speed and identity gauge gains, right? If Robust Sophus casted his energy release before the Meteor impact, the Betrayal Meteor was actually counted as one of the major DPS because, um, because of her energy release. And identity gains as well. For some destroyers used it for faster hammer bonk mode. So you actually relied on RNG to do damage. When they had no other sets like Nightmare, Hallucination, Salvation. So buffs were all over the place. And, the, and when raids have cutscenes as well, it was really bad. So some people do use them in cast dun uh, Chaos Dungeons and open world PvP. It's a fun relic set to have. All classes for Chaos Dungeon is highly recommended because it is actually really good. So if you actually have a main character that you can swap different types of sets, you can do that. And what you can do is it will make your Chaos Dungeon so easy. And cube as well. Because it's going to create that lightning things around you. As you guys have may seen me doing uh, Chaos Dungeons. Also at the same time, the damage that the Meteor does, the damage that the lightning does, your preemptive strike impacts it as well so the meteor will be guaranteed crit with the preemptive strike damage increase that's why most of the stuff just gets deleted it's actually a really good combination so if you have a preemptive strike level three plus full betrayal set you can clean up chaos dungeon super easily that's why I'm, that's why all my characters have a different uh relic set when i go into chaos dungeons so this was very quick because uh, it doesn't really require as much. So to wrap it up, I covered all, all of it. This is just the fundamental stuff. I like, hope you guys understood the fundamental stuff because these stuff are very important because Relic Set is just an icing on the cake and it helps you. Relic Set is not going to change like... Well, some of the classes, it does change you a whole lot. It is, it is like damage versus utility, crit versus speed, and crit versus consistency and all that stuff. It is apples to oranges. It is not one or the better. You have to you have to figure it out and you have to find out which it works for you. Except supports, you have to go yearning. And for, for example, Dominion as well. They're all different. So I think it's very important for you to know these fundamental information first and then build your own. And I think you guys can definitely do that as well. Like, don't fear that it, like your set is going to be very bad. So that being said, this wraps the video, guys. We did a lot of talk, and I've seen uh, raids and all these things. So bye, YouTube, guys.